The Sopranos is said to be one of the best TV shows of all time, being about a New Jersey mob boss, Tony Soprano, played by James Gandolfini. It's good to be in something from the ground floor. I came too late for that. I know. But lately I'm getting the feeling that I came in at the end. The best is over. Many Americans, I think, feel that way. I think about my father. He never reached the heights like me. But in a lot of ways, he had it better. He had his people. Going to therapy as a way to balance out his life in the mafia and his real family life. And it's that mixture of different scenes that culminate together to make one of the best shows of the late 90s and early 2000s. Are you in the mafia? Am I in the what? Whatever you want to call it. Organized crime. I'm in a waste management business. Everybody immediately assumes you're mopped up. It's a stereotype. And it's offensive. And you're the last person I would want to perpetuate it. Fine. With it not being afraid to show an anti-hero or a villain protagonist on television, Tony's the type of character you say the audacity of this bastard. Along with his comedic side, with lovable quotes, everyone still repeats to this day. Your father never had the makings of a varsity athlete. Oh, what the? Along with this and the supernatural and complicated situations, to leave things open for interpretation. Charles Pagano. How the fuck do you know that? He says he was your first. But I feel many more. Hey! That one's laughing. Poison Ivy? He wants to know if it still itches. Don't fuck with me. And in some cases, actually being a bit relatable. So is no wonder the show had somewhat of a resurgence in recent years, due to the epidemic and the new movie that came out. I also think it's probably due to shows like Breaking Bad, with people wanting a hit of good quality television. But did you know there was a game based on the series for the PS2? When I heard about it, I thought it would have been like, I don't know, a GTA 4 clone, where you play as Tony or something. Though, I kind of sort of fucked up the timeline, so technically it would have been more like Vice City starring Tony Soprano. Which actually isn't too far off to similar games. The tie-in games for their inspirations, The Godfather and Scarface, actually had decent games that played well into the source material. And they were made around the same time. So, maybe there is some potential for this game. And since I'm here to satisfy the curiosity you have at the back of your mind, let's find out. I've been coming here for years. I know too much about the subconscious now. The Sopranos game takes place before the last six seasons. Studio 7 is the one to take hold of the project, as they've done many other licensed games in the past. But it's also a lot more cheaper and without the scope of an open world game. And as I joke about Tony being the main protagonist, that honor instead goes to Joey LaRocca, who is the son of Big Pussy in the early seasons, kills for being an FBI informant, and is not played by a younger Joey Diaz. I should feel like an idiot, but I don't think I'm the only one who makes that misconception. But Joey was loved like an illegitimate son, because Big Pussy apparently had a lot of kids, but Joey was never mentioned one. Joey was a crook who crossed paths with Tony, and he gives him a job as a bouncer for the Bada Bing. And this is a common place where you'll see the cast of the show, but it's only a handful. Along with Tony, you have Pauly and Silvio doing their own business and giving you orders. One of the most infamous being a mission where you have to order them food. Hey Tony, you want anything from the deli? Pauly's hungry. Which must mean you're buying. Give me a salami on rye, lettuce, mayo, mustard. Eh, uh, chicken soup with rice. Lots of pickles. Cheeseburger and a vanilla shake. If it's chocolate, you're fucking taking it back, got it? No fat turkey, no bread, no mayo, no potato salad. Just meat and a pickle. Polly has a system where you give him money, you get to unlock other behind the scenes content. Which doubles up as you play the game. Got a lot of class, kid. Christopher is also present. He is like Jesse Pinkman of the show, but a lot more of an asshole. He really has a huge ship on the shoulder for you. Mostly because of Tony's favoritism. So he treats you like shit the entire game. You got a big heart, Tone. Putting Big Pussy's bastard kid on the payroll. Hey, I'm standing right here. And you can thank Tony for that. Your old man was a rat, like it or not. I would to tell you, kid. Chris ain't wrong. He's probably still bitchy over his girlfriend dying. Oh shit, uh, spoilers, I guess. Then there's Vito, who was one of the many background characters of the show, who ends up having a larger role in the last season. Which is probably why he's in the game. Um, won't be a rat. That's number one. That's something like my, I'm very proud of my character, he wasn't a rat. He's a cock, but he wasn't a rat. 
He is part of the April family tree, which gets sinned out every season. And that's it. Now there's a few more characters that show up, but not much. Even the dumb bartender is different. That clearly isn't Georgie, although I did think he quit in season 5. It's a huge mystery to why though. Why would he seek employment elsewhere? I suppose it's one of the many mysteries of the series. I'm sure the answer is said in the podcast or something. Joey does have an entire narrative in the game, but most of the characters in the show play a very small part of it. Which is a shame because the voice acting for them is the best part, and commonly praised by even detractors. It was an act of passion, which I still regret. This is business. Could get approval from New York, just to be safe. Guy's like a dog, taking a crap on my lawn. I don't need the city council to tell me what to do. I already know. So what's the plan, Skip? And this is the aspect they're the most proud of. Which, you know, makes sense because of the reason people are playing the game in the first place. But it is somewhat odd that despite being very supporting roles, they don't have as much screen time as you think. Joey's actor, Christian Malaman, did audition for the show. And while he didn't get a role, he was likely enough to be a part of the game instead. Graphic-wise, they don't look that bad. Now, admittedly, I do have a bit of a bias, as I find this style of PS2 graphics to be a good balance of old-school polygon aesthetic and the modern graphics you see today. Games like Milligar Sala 2, Devil May Cry, Early Yakuza, you get the picture. But instead of being cool anime characters fighting each other, a lot of them look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> Most of the narrative has Joey interacting with new separate characters, made specifically for the game. Some of the earliest includes Trishel, one of the dancers Joey becomes involved with. And Reggie, who is your childhood friend who wants to be in the mod lifestyle. Believe what you want, but I deserve this. This is my time. Not all of us grew up knowing Tony Soprano. His actor played another character that died in season one. Hi Jack. Bye Jack. His name is actually Brendan. Polly has issues with this guy named Mario, and he tells you to take care of the situation. That by slamming his head against the urinal. Needing to dump the body, Joey and Reggie take care of him in the docks. And this is where you do the first gameplay session. The gameplay of the Pranas is a beat-em-up, where you fight tons of nameless NPCs using your fists or held objects. I mean, I guess that's accurate to the show. The game gives you some cheap combos to use that progress as the story goes on. There is an option to use a gun, but it's far more impractical since using it actually kills you if you use it at the wrong time. The reason being that shooting your gun will call too much attention to your mob activities. And the gunplay is pretty terrible anyways. Despite having the option to outright mutilate your opponents with saws and head trauma. And being up so many people, you're bound to cause suspicion anyways. On the other hand, this does give a lot more gravity to using a gun. The handgun is really the only one you use, so it's actually a lot more meaningful when you do use it. Though I think it should take less than 3 shots for an enemy to go down realistically. And I guess because of that I'm kind of mixed on it, you know? There's something good there, but I don't think it was executed perfectly. One of the moves you could do is pin people down, something that the enemy AI absolutely takes advantage of. Which can lead to an endless spiral of this crap happening. And it can look really, really silly. Turns out, Mario is still alive, which prompts Joey having to put him down in his misery. Reggie still the watch that has his name on it, as well as Bad Idea written all over it too, as it will later bite him in the ass in the future. Another character that shows up is Big Pussy himself, but the hallucination goes throughout the game. Although, he doesn't really play that big of a role. Careful, kid. Meat ain't the only thing that gets chopped up around here. Why do you care? You're like a dream or something, right? The game itself is very linear, so no open world. Hell, there's not even a map, as it would be unnecessary. They're more like hub worlds, really. You can listen to little tidbits from NPCs throughout the levels. How can you not like script clubs? I just don't see the point. And why'd you agree to come? I thought I'd like it to see Tony Soprano. Here in a room full of half-naked women, and you're looking for a fully clothed middle-aged mobster. If you think that's weird, then there's a the guy playing video games in a strip club. Maybe I'm stupid, but why would a chick come here alone? You are stupid. Oh, I get it. You're a... Muff diver, I think is the correct term. Well, all that... The lesbian thing with the, uh... Jennifer Beals. It's not bad. And sometimes you get to do little side missions. Just finding funny dialogue and items you could trade for money. 
Now, there's no shop or anything like that in the game. You can't really do much of the money. You can gamble in some places, but that's it. Most of it just goes to Polly. You can get more money by beating up people, but the game can interrupt the action and it will be lost. So I guess Polly won't be getting that $5. I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart. Another interesting concept is the dialogue choices. You can respond neutrally, passively, or aggressively to characters. And they can make certain scenarios a little easier or harder depending on what you do. And I will purposely choose all the bad options just for some fun. Like see if I can roll some monsters right in front of their faces. My death switch is so big, it should be another sequel. A son of a bitch! Did I just tell you not to say that again? The only time I really broke balls was the time I made fun of Christopher's addiction and just kept going. And later be chastised for Tony for continuing. You light a match and think you could sit with us and fucking talk back to me? How about torching up a crack pipe? Would that do it? Fuck you, two years sober, asshole. So that's why you're such a prickly motherfucker. You are fucking dead! Gonna kill him for telling the truth? Enough already. Joey, have a seat. You earned it. It took me years to get a place at this table. And this rap bastard comes along, he's instantly one of the family? Uh, your call, Chris. Fine by me, I ain't the hothead around here. Hey kid, you don't talk like that to a captain. No matter how immature he is. Now get the fuck out of here. But that's as worse as it gets. But then again, I can't say a lot of Telltale Games did it any better. There are some missions where the TV characters will aid you. The most noteworthy one is where you go with Christopher to make collectors in the gym. And both of you get to fight muscle-bound employees. I know Michael and Paroli is pretty fit, but I don't think he has the makings of a varsity Terminator. What is it with you and this obsession with this varsity crap? This level also has strange objects that could be used. Like slamming people's head with dumbbells, or something that's out of the pineapple. Where'd you get that beauty scar, tough guy? Eating pineapple? At the end of the level, you get to torture the guy. But with no QT or anything like that. Other characters you meet throughout the story includes Neil, who is one of the financial advisors for the DeMio crew, with a daughter about to be married. He is also a drug-addicted sex pig. Now, Neil is a very odd character in the game. The full character's name is Neil Camerata. Now, there are other legal advisors that share his name. There's Neil Meek, who is the main lawyer Tony uses throughout the show, especially in later seasons, who he seems to have a positive relationship with, known for his love for ketchup. There's also Brian Camerata, who is a lot younger and is related to Carmela's side of the family, being a bit of a financial advisor to her. I think the game wanted to use these characters, but were unable to do so, so I guess they compromised and made an original character. None of them have the same traits as Neil in the game. The closest would be Meek, I guess, but even then the characters are totally different. There doesn't seem to be any mention of him being a distant in-law to Tony, so I guess the name is just an odd coincidence. Really, he's just a pointless sleazeball character that shows up with little impact. He's like Saul Goodwin without the charm. Saul Man. Then there's Angelo Bachetta, who was the main antagonist, part of the Philadelphia family. He's played by the guy from Total Recall, and is related to the Mario kid you killed earlier. He has suspicions of his nephew's disappearance. And since Reggie is walking around with his watch, that means he has to be taken out. After failing via cultural reference of the previous episode, Joey had the choice to spare or kill Reggie. But none of it matters that he's killed by your mortal enemy, Tuzio. Yeah, he's a hitman character working for the Philadelphia family that was like in the background that I didn't even know it existed. You shoot him like three to four times and he falls off a seven story building. Somehow, he survives the fall. Still going, this asshole! The next level has you attending a bar mitzvah in Vesuvio's for one of Hesh's relatives. Ari does not make an appearance. Somebody snooping around, and Ari don't need no fair reviews. But Hesh does make a small cameo. There he is. But for the next coming levels, you get to associate heavily with one of the show's fan favorite characters, AJ Soprano. Joey agrees to help AJ as security for his party. This is during his event planning phase, which, as you can see, it's not very successful. At the beginning of the level, you get to beat up this punk named Frankie and slamming his head in the toilet. But as it turns out, he is actually an associate of AJ's. Oh, I didn't know you were AJ's friend. You made me eat shit, literally. As he does business with Desmond, an enforcer of the Jamaican gang, they ruin the party and stab his friend, killing him in the process. 
This is a very interesting scenario because it shows AJ having to put up with the death of a friend. Oh, and they also steal AJ's car, which gets stolen all the time throughout the game. And it's because of this whole scenario, AJ ends up getting more screen time than all the other characters from the show. Joey tries to get the car back multiple times. He tries to keep it a secret from Tony since messing around like this could be very dangerous for him. Joey gets a car back by beating everyone up in a garage. And this is probably the most annoying part because like three people gang up on you with hammers and knocking you down over and over and just willing on you. After defeating the Jamaican gangsters, he gets the car back. But Paulie forces him to meet up with the Neil lawyer I talked about earlier. Don't worry, I got it. Yeah, Paulie? It's something for AJ. I, I borrowed a video game. After meeting with Neil, you meet some higher up goons from the Philadelphia gang. And steal your car once again. Later, AJ gets apprehended by the Jamaican gang in the gym, leading him to be held hostage and knocked out while Joey takes care of him. Having all this happen to AJ should shake things up for his character arc. With AJ in the hospital, Tony finds out what's been going on. I brought you in, a lot of people said don't trust the little bastard. I rolled the dice, and now you got him throwing dope parties and being stuck by the Moulinian? I was just trying to help AJ. You should have called me. Hey, I got him out alive, Tony. Mission accomplished. Well, lucky you're alive, you little shit. One lucky son of a bitch. If this kid had gone down, you'd be dead, Junior. Now get the fuck out of here and get me a coffee. In the meantime, you still upon other dealings in the hospital, including drug trafficking and a fake robbery or something. Never open. Don't know how they can stay in business. Can you get what you're looking for anyplace else? Not really. That's how they stay in business. And you get drugged in scene triple. I guess this is a way to adapt some of the dream sequences or something, I'm not really sure. And there's also the mission where you kill Tuzio from earlier. Yeah, I really wasn't joking when I said he was alive. Well, not anymore. Cost ten cents across a bridge. Well, I don't have ten cents. I think I peed my pants. You look like my nephew, Malcolm. How are you, Malcolm? Sorry, you must be confused. I want to go back to Miami. Can you take me to Miami, Malcolm? Go sell crazy someplace else, old man. Looks like this was a dad's favorite NPC. After beating up Neil for being annoying, Tony takes you back. It turns out that Angela has been dealing on Tony's turf. So he sends you and Vita to burn down his porn studio, where both of you end up having to beat up the staff, including gay porn stars. Of course they chose Vita for this mission. Oh, I knew that was coming! He has to run fast, because even though the building is burning down, there are still several goons who really want to kick your ass instead of save themselves. Joey finds Rochelle, is trapped on the top floor. You can respond emotionally to get Vito to threaten to kill you. Don't be such a fucking whip! Watch it, Junior. I'll clip you right here. Then take a fucking shot. Two minutes, Captain Courageous. Then I'm gone. She becomes a partner character and can be very useful in fighting off goons. This and rescuing AJ are some of the more heroic action Joey does. But just like the show, they'll constantly remind you how terrible these characters are. As some events afterwards involve beating up a guy over socks and beating up the health inspector to shut down such rallies. Honestly, this place should have been burnt down. During the fire, you meet the head pornographer, Louis the Bat, who uses a bat as a weapon. Tony's car is brought back with Joey's girlfriend heavily beaten. There's also some implication in the dialogue that she was raped, which makes this next line a lot more upsetting. I'll kill a bum! <laughs> well, someone's gonna have to. Not Joey. Those two were putting people under when he was jerking off in gym class. Nobody fucking asked you. Who knew Christopher could be such an asshole? Very shocking. Okay, maybe not that shocking. So for your revenge, you take on Angelo and the rest of the Philadelphia family in the docks. You get captured and reveal that Christopher has been giving them information the entire time. They tie you up so you have to break free. And oh my god, I don't know if it's just me, but I died so many times for some reason. I kept moving the controls like how they told me to, but for some reason it just didn't work. I tried like 10 freaking times, and I think I moved it in some silly way to have it work. And it turns out I'm not the only one with the issue, so I don't know, maybe it just didn't register properly. Both of the final levels, you just beat up random people one by one, more than the other levels. Here, Joey beats up like 50 people, and probably killed a dozen of them. Really picking up those numbers. Although I said the handgun is your main weapon, there is a small time where you have an option to use a shotgun. But the aiming is crap because there really isn't any. After fighting Angelo, you have a boss bunch of characters you barely remember. 
like the goons in the lawyer level, and Louis the Bad was the Bat, who is also the semi-last enemy you fight. Joey defeats Angela once and for all, chant his own legacy. You can't kill me. You're a punk. Big pussy bastard kid. You ain't nobody. I'm Joey LaRocca. Hear that? Joey LaRocca. The last name you're ever gonna hear. And instantly after that, you become a made man. And that's where the game ends. The credits, and well, the main menu, really likes to use photos from the show, which kind of looks very cheap. Reminds me of an FMV game. As you give Polly money, you get to unlock small bonus features, a lot of which that are concept sketches, and very small videos of the cast. And the menu is so awkward and sloppy. Never wear a dead man's watch, especially if you whack the guy. I did unlock most of them, but the last mission gives you tons of cash to use, but you can't really spend it. Ah, screw it, he could get his own money. What's the worst that could happen? Throughout the game, you're also allowed to play poker with the characters, which is nice if you want to hear more voice clips. The poker minigame was also a way to pay more for the tributes, so you get to gamble with Polly and Tony, take their money, and use that money to give it to Polly, which will probably go back to Tony anyways. That's why somebody you don't trust, you call a snake. How can you trust a guy who can literally go fuck themselves? I'm gonna be honest, I never really bothered to learn how to play. Joey's story is pure filler. It doesn't add to anything, but it doesn't subtract either. And many of the other characters and groups don't have any real say. What am I doing here? And why do I exist? The existential question. Joey doesn't appear in the show, obviously. I, but I'm pretty sure he would have made a great background character. Now, at first I thought it was a joke, but I did find something fairly interesting. Similar to Vito, there are many other background characters that don't play into the main plot until they do. Which makes many of the rewatch of these episodes a lot more interesting, since you probably didn't notice them the first time around. Others include Carlo, Eugene, Benny, or that big bald dude in the middle of making fun of Christopher. Season 6 introduces Walden Belfiar who I guess you could say is the canonized version of Joey LaRocca. He appears at the right time, has a similar build, and he's actually related to one of Big Pussy's maidens. But instead of an implied guma, it's his actual wife this time, being a distant cousin instead of a son. Which makes you question if there's some connection. Like, was this originally supposed to be Walden's backstory? Or maybe vice versa? Coincidence? Very circumstantial. As for the content of the game itself, it's actually pretty small. Once you beat the game, that's it. Difficulty-wise, I guess you could get good at the game and make it easier for yourself. But that really isn't a reward. I think that Power Rangers game I talked about had more going for it, content and difficulty-wise. But that's not saying much. Though I think a lot of that was used to make it accessible to literally anyone. So, that was Sopranos of the PS2. It's not really bad, but it's not god-awful either. But there is some care to the story. What's good about what happened with this game is that I was uh, able to uh, have some closure with my family, which I really wasn't able to do in the, in the series. And truth be told, Joey's story in of itself isn't all that terrible. I think one thing that's kind of interesting is that Joey causes his own problems. If he left Mario alone, none of this would have happened. And if he didn't beat up AJ's friend, none of that situation would have happened either. I wonder if there's something there, but I'm not really sure. I do think that a lot of the reasons it is the way it is is due to money. Like, out of all the cast, they could only get, like, what, seven characters? But I guess that's a part of the charm to me when it comes to licensed titles. You get to be creative with what you can work with. And I guess it implies here, too. The game itself is fairly meh. But in other aspects, I think it's decent. And it really seemed to have a lot of care put into it. So in some ways, it's like saying the game is bad, but it's a decent adaptation of the show, I guess? The Sopranos' Road to Respect is, in my opinion, pretty underrated. Well, I can't understand why a lot of people didn't like the gameplay. But flaws and all, I think it has a very unique spot in the legacy of the Sopranos show. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want, see some of my other content. I do other videos on other lesser known licensed games, such as including the one for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Have a nice day, and I hope to see you soon.